I just did a video on the beers list of potentially inappropriate medications for people as they get older. The medications fall under categories like potentially inappropriate or to be used with caution, and the list explains why. Well, what if the medications that you take are on that list? The researchers weren't trying to leave you high and dry. Oh, you have this problem, but don't take the medication that's supposed to help with it because it could be bad for you. Just try to suffer through it. There's also a mandate to help people find other alternatives, ideally things that are safer for you and won't cause other problems. In this video, I tell you how to access that information so you can be more informed and you can have much better conversations with your doctor. So let's do it. So the Beers List. In 1991, Dr. Mark Beers made the first list of medications that are potentially bad for you as you get older, and the list has been updated periodically since that time. If you don't know whether or not your medications are on that list and you want to watch the video, the link will be above me and it'll also be in the description below. But once you figure out that a medication that you take or that you've been prescribed is on the list, what do you do then? I don't advise that you go cold turkey or go throw your medications in the garbage or do something else to try to just suffer through it. Instead, go back to your doctor and have an informed conversation. Questions might include things like, well, why was I prescribed that medication? What condition is it actually trying to treat? Is that the best medication for me? And if so, why? How do the benefits for me outweigh the potential problems that are listed in the Beers criteria? If you aren't sure whether or not that medication is the best one for me, would it make sense to explore alternatives? That's when it would really help for you to have a list of possible alternatives to share with your doctor. All of this helps you be a more informed consumer. So how do you find those options? Well, in 2015, they published a literature review from 2000 on looking at what are some alternatives to those medications in terms of other medications that you could take that may be safer for you. And they also list when appropriate non-medication alternatives, other things that you could be doing. So here is what the formal paper looks like and the link is in the description below. I want to highlight three different components of the actual paper. And the first one is table one, which starts on the third page down and it is labeled uh, E10. It lists alternatives for medications included in the high risk medications and the elderly measure. So the point is it's organized by the medications that were considered high risk and there are other ideas for them. For example, you can see here the first category is anticholinergic medications. Some examples of those medications that are highly anticholinergic are the first generation antihistamines and it lists those there and then it lists alternatives to them in references so you can see what research it was based on. And so it goes through and shows you different um, medications and the alternatives for them. Now the second uh, component that I want to highlight is table two and it starts on the fifth page down. So let's go down and look at, take a look at that. It is on um, page labeled E12 and it's organized by different diseases or problems that someone might have and medications that might be more risky when you have that disease or condition. It's labeled alternatives to medications included in the potentially harmful drug disease interactions in the elderly. And as you can see, the first examples are things like falls, if people are out of higher fall risk or dementia, if somebody has been given that diagnosis some of the drugs that could be prescribed for them and the things that um, are alternatives that may be healthier for them. Now, the third component that I wanna point out is the discussion section. And this actually starts back up on the second page of the article, it's labeled uh, page E9. And this goes through the different types of medications that are on the list and explains why they are thought to be potentially harmful as we age. So this gives you the why about the medications being on the list and helps you to be more educated as a consumer. So you can see uh, it starts out, there are things like anticholinergic drugs and it explains why the medications might be uh, harmful for you if they are more anticholinergic in nature and so on. Now, sometimes these academic papers are difficult for people to read and digest, so another resource has been put together by healthandaging.org. It's basically a cheat sheet with a clear vision of a subset of the information, and I'll put the link in the description below, but let's also check that out together. 
So it looks like this, and as you can see, it's just a simpler version for many people to check out if that's more useful to you. The first page explains what the idea is, and it tries to highlight some key points to how to think about your medications and what to remember. And then it goes through a very short list of some of the common medications that can be prescribed um, and possible alternatives that you can discuss with your health care provider if that's useful for people. Now again, we want to highlight that just because the medications are on the beers list and they're potentially inappropriate, it doesn't mean they're the devil or that no one should take them. What they are trying to say is that there could be certain risks associated with taking them. And if you're not informed about those risks, you can't have informed conversation with your healthcare team about whether or not they're the best medication for you. I also want to point out that this review was done in 2015 with information spanning from 2000 to 2014. And a few years have gone by since then, so there could be updated research and information that causes your provider to say something different than what is on the list. So take all of this with a grain of salt as you educate yourself toward the best decisions possible. Now, if you'd like to take a break from thinking about medications and want to focus on other things that you can do in your actual life to help your body and your brain, feel free to watch this video on many of the non-medication things that you can be doing to have better quality of life. Thanks so much for coming today, and I can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye.